Next group comes from further north. My brother-in-law, Paul Henry, works hard at uh, training his group, and I'm pretty sure you will see a good performance. Paul, are you ready? Their entrance song, as you will notice, is different from all of the others you've heard. It is, has Athabascan overtones. It is slightly different. But I think you'll like it. I'm pretty sure you will. We would like to thank Juno for inviting us here. The Clinton Nation has always been loyal to the United States. If anybody has ever seen the pictures of 194 Potlatch and Sitka, the big canoes there in Sitka, every one of them were flying the American flag the biggest flag they could. Every boat had an American flag. So based on that, I'd like to tell you a little story. <clears throat> it comes from Yakutat. About the year 1940, there was a group, an army group came to Yakutat to build the airfield. While they were there, the war started. After the war started, the dock became a security area. They put a fence across the railroad track. There was two old gentlemen coming down the railroad track after spending great time with their friends up there, and they were half looped up. They were coming down singing songs, holding, hanging on to each other, trying to hold each other up, walking down. They came up to this gate and somebody hollered, Halt! Two gentlemen got real quiet, looking around. Halt! Who goes there? Didn't say anything for a while. Halt! Who's there? Pretty soon the old two gentlemen didn't know what to say, so they said, My country is a so, even to that point, we were loyal. <laughs> the, uh, the way it used to go, like I said before, the invitation used to go out ahead of time, and the boats used to come in to wherever they're going to hold the potluck, and they'd tell you where they're going to hold the potluck, and then they'd sing the outside song to let the people know that they are here, the dancers are here, and that's the way we approach every one of our peers. So with that, we are going to go into our outside song. But we would like to dedicate this outside song to the Wanawa Shaw. This is their song, Kaguantan and Kaguantan Yatke. So, my uh, elderly gentleman here, Paul, he looks like he wants to say something, so I think I'll proceed to him. Boo! <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I just want to let you know, I am wearing, he was probably my uncle, or my older brother, George Davis, who died not too long ago in Puna. He passed his dance jacket down to me. You know, today, I was very proud of the Mount 
fellow other dancers. I was real proud of them because I too belong in that bunch. In those among those people. Now, one of my older brothers, Johnson, who died in Huna, Khun Khrushchev is here someplace. He told me a story one time. We got acquainted and Anchorage when we were attending the AFN convention. We uh, never knew very much of uh, one another. The only way I knew him was through the gold medal tournament. He was always the, uh, the uh, head man in the basketball team that he brought from Mahana. Anyway, he told me that a long time back, Latuya Bay was ours. When Patrick Nehadi decided to move someplace else, as they were going out of the Tuya Bay in canoes, some of us went north, some of us went south. That's why I have some relatives in Huna, which I am proud of. Sometimes I always feel like I'm all alone in yak time. But then I start thinking, my nephew here, I told you yesterday that he's the man that's going to take my place, George Ramos, for maybe as long as I am living now. I don't look it, but I'm 79 years old. My knees get kind of weak every now and then, and I get out of breath. So everything is left in my nephew, George Ramos. Here to us all. Another thing, I helped bring the Mount St. Elias this far. I have been in it after our, our leader died, the last leader, Klaus Kheb, Harry K. Bremner. All of you knew him. A kind man. And then I had an uncle on my father's side who was all of Abraham. And then I had another uh, cousin, Charlie White. Then I had another uncle on my father's side. Nick Melton. They were the people that started it off. The Mount St. Elias dancers. Now I'm going to brag to you. Way back in the 50s, the beginning of the 50s, I was the AB president in Yaktat at the time. We got a letter from Grant Camp stating we, uh, they thought that we should start bringing back our Indian dances and Indian songs. So 
I told all of Abraham, Harry Brunner, Nick Melton, Charlie White, and a few others. Now you see our song leader, Harold Brunner. He's been with the Mount St. Elias dancers ever since he was a kid. And his children are following him because Harry Brunner and the others never wanted to see Mount St. Elias dancers uh, to lay the dances and songs down. That's why I'm always proud of the younger uh, people. They've come a long ways through JOM. And my sister, Nellie Henry Lord, has been working with them for five years at the uh, school in Yakta. And then she was joined with Harold Brunner, taught them the songs. And uh, later on, Ruch Shekhoish, he joined them. And believe it or not, George was able to bring them up to where they are today. That is, learning the songs, which I am proud of. I always feel, when I see these children doing the uh, dances and singing the songs, I feel real proud. I know that our Indian heritage, our Indian songs, our Indian dances will never die. Thank you. It is known when you are invited to a potlatch a long time ago, the inviting party used to say one thing, the tide has gone out. Ye ye do a flaw. That means you are stuck here. And so now the tide has gone out, you're stuck. I Because the Yakutat can dance five different tribal dances, we have quite a few incoming songs, but now we would like to use the regular ones from Yakutat.
I used to sing through one of these things. The next song we do for you is known as an interior free for all. That means that any way you are. <laughs> Somebody's been smoking up here. time I was a little boy, I used to listen to the stories. In the evening time, you had to sit at the foot after supper and learn the stories and histories of your clan. In the daytime, you had to work. That's the way the uncle treated you. You never grew up with your father and mother. From the time you were a little boy, they sent you to your uncle. He trained you physically and mentally. But he used to tell me the stories about Takaka Panana. And that has been many years ago. Today and yesterday, on this very stage, I saw for the first time Takaka Panana. They were performing up there. We had close contact with them from Yakutat because they were the trade center there. They used to journey up the Alsac River to its side, car cross, White Horse, I think as far as Northway. And they used to come down the same way, known as the Alsac Trail. And this is the first time I saw them today. But in doing so, we traded dances and songs. And the next song we'd like to do for you comes from the interior. It's known as a Tongan dance. And they used to tell me they come from the drive area first, from Drive to Yakuta. The Tongan, Kaisawa, the state bird. So I hope they uh, forgive us for what we do to the state bird here on the stage tonight. Somebody shot, solved my shotgun short.
By the sound of it, I think his truck was just a little under caliber. I've been getting him a 10 gauge 3 in. The first contact with the people from underneath the clouds came on July 2nd, July 2nd, 1782. They thought it was the return of the White Raven when it started coming over the horizon. And when it came ashore, you weren't supposed to look at it because it would turn to stone. So you had to look at it through the stock, one, of a wild celery or moss, so you wouldn't turn to stone. And then they noticed there was people on there. And these people they called hairy-faced people because they had a lot of hair on their face. And so they called them also from people underneath the cloud. But in the past years after that, after the fur, price started going up in China. Russia jumped into the act. And then also the Yankee boats that used to come up here. Phoenix, who sailboats used to come up here. They brought two items. One was the shotgun, rifles, and the other one was fire water. And each nation or tribe writes their song about it. King Kamehameha has got his drinking song, and we have ours too. So tonight, we would like to do for you the drinking song. We are not implying that the ladies drink more than we do, that they're doing the song, it's just that we thought we are.
I've been looking for uh, a woman, they call her uh, Dorothy Henry. Well, if you're here, say, aren't I? I hope you raise your hand. <laughs> I don't know where she's at. Where are you? sober tonight, see so, uh, <laughs> so, We would like to uh, apologize for that song to all of the AA and all of the uh, other organizations. And, uh, you notice that uh, our youngsters are sitting down, they didn't take part in the song. Well, they can't get us for alcohol abuse on their too. At this time, I'd like to turn our program over to Lena, and uh, after that, we'll continue with our program. Thank you for this point. You kaka kwaya wo o. I wish I had teen katab kana had teen. Yak koha de de fall tan way at ku wa ha de ku ikri. Ketu kush kutki na kliik wa zeik. A ka wa da katu si gut. Kekti nu kasak de chank. A kahoe katu was a Hayid ya juno a kwan kisati yahu eighty de kum taksa. Dukta neki do was a shaguni in kukhanik. Byron, are you here? Would you please come up? Also, would Sally Edwards please come up? Also, Bob Paulo. His sisters are Linda, Lorena, and Paul Jackson. Would you please come up on stage? Kushatustik, <laughs> 
Was it is a good I'll try to understand. Uh, I'll try to explain it in English now. Byron and I, and Sally, and my sister Nellie, and my brother Paul Henry, we all have the same grandfather. Our grandfather's great grandfather, and down, our fathers were brothers, and. 
we come from the same clan, except that Byron's mother came from a different house. Even though they were that close a long time ago, they built houses and when there got to be too many people in one house, they'd build another one and they gave different names to different houses, even though they were probably the same family uh, they were given. Our ancestors migrated over Mont St. Elias and our clan name is Kashkakwan. Uh, Byron's Klinkit name is Tuchtenek. And I always wanted to do this. We never took time as uh, Kwashkakon people, as Mont St. Elias dancers. In all the years we've been coming down here to really just introduce him as who he really is and where he belongs. I have some other people I called up here. And uh, Bob Paulo wanted to dance with us. And I have known all the time from, I came to Juneau the very first time when I was 12 years old. We went over to Douglas to, my mother told me we were going to see my aunt, Bessie Weaver. We went over there and spent a couple of weeks with her. And my mother made sure I knew that this was my aunt and that she came from Yakutat. Well, Bessie Weaver's clinket name was Kachkuak. She had a brother in Yakutat named Billy Jackson, Kusat Wadzuk, and another brother, Jimmy Jackson. His name was Yayih Kathe. Well, she, and Bessie Weaver happened to come down to Juneau and got married in Juneau, which is uh, Lucille's grandmother. And Lucille's clinket name is Siyat. Siyat name goes all the way to the Copper River and to Night Island. Her sister's name was Anduth which is also a Copper River name. Bob Paulo is Lucille's niece, nephew. His name is Kadata, which is also a name from up Copper River. And we have, he has two sisters here uh, I forgot, Kai Jinaha, Rina's, Rina's clinket name. That's a name from copper, Dukai Jinaha. And so immediately I recognized these names, even though I knew they were from there, we never ever really talked about it. Arlinda, what's your name? Uh, our Linda's name is on Ed's. I mentioned Billy Jackson, Jimmy Jackson. Is, uh, Jimmy Jackson was Paul Jackson's grandfather. Paul Jackson and I grew up together in Yakutat. And other than that, I don't know what his real mother's uh, uh, history is, but I always felt that he was also a part of our family. And at this time, I'd like everyone from Yakutat, whoever is from Yakutat, the child of Yakutat, to stand up and let's honor these people who are also our family. I want to thank you for giving me this time. Uh, Susie Abraham will now say a few words. Thank <laughs> you. 
Thank you. Thank you. Before the Christ, man sent the light dancer. It's Kahan Lehia. It's Kahan Lehom. Pinaya Hom. Okay. Is the time there? He holds me. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, I want to speak just a few words. I'm going to talk my own language. That's we proud of. My grandchildren are uh, graduating from high school and college. I teach them to talk Tlingit. Elaine, come on, stand by me. That's my daughter. Be before Elaine, What's that? Uh, Saint Elias, you decide you. My mother is trying to do a little bit of our history for you. My mother is 85 years old, and so you have to bear with her because she feels that when we bring a person out like Byron, the whole background of why he is brought over should be told. When a shirt like this is brought out, when we have our potlatches, we bring out as much as $4,000. This shirt has seen maybe $50,000 recently. That's how much money we bring out. She wants to say that we are the people of the copper. From our land came the Tina. From our land came the copper. Before we were called Monsignor Elias, we were called the people of the copper. We come from Copper River. We dug the copper, and that's what we are called, Copper River. In Klinkit, I want to announce. We could see Mount St. Elias on this side, Mount Fairweather on this side. According to you know, uh, ladies and gentlemen, Susie has always been as a mother to me. She always called me Yitk, meaning son, you know. And I used to uh, appreciate it. I uh, don't want to tell any more about myself, but Byron, are you still there? You want to say a few words? I'm deeply honored by this recognition by my home people. It's the moment that I will always treasure, and I look forward with deep humility to the responsibilities that are mine as a member of my people.
testing. All right. The Clinkett Nation always believed in spirit world. Everything in the Clinkett Nation had a spirit. The wind, the water, the trees. The Clinkett law was very strict. You never became, became you never came between Clinkett and his land. Each clan knew from what mountain to what mountain is theirs, from what river to what river is theirs. In order to pass through another tribe's or clan's land, you had to have permission. You never hunted on another clan's land. If they caught you, they broke up your canoe or your hunting equipment and drove you out of there. They believed in the spirit world. We call it Hakinayeki, the spirit above us. The missionaries came and said that we believed and we prayed to the totem poles. That was not correct. The totem poles are story poles. They told of great deeds, great wars, great events. After the Russians were conquered in Yakutat, we burnt their fort down and drove them out of Yakutat. Like every, everything else, they said we massacred them. It's because they did not treat us right. To this day, I always wonder how in the daylights did the Russians sell Yakutat when we drove them out of there. Oh. To this day, I wonder. And I can show you in the Russian history book, written by Dr. Richard Pierce, that the Russians were driven out of Yakutat. They never owned it. But still, we believed in the spirit world. Our village was in Akka during the Russian period. From there, it moved on to across the bay. Anybody familiar with Yakutat will know that the horseshoe shape of the bay on the right-hand side, Kantak Island, which sunk at one time during the earthquake with two people on there. But that's where our village was. In the olden days, we used to trade our big canoes, Kokhtiyav, Kitiyav, Chatiyav, Hatkatan, all the names of the big canoes. And the big tradesmen, Kichistas, used to sail from Yakutat south with fur, all the dried fruit, dried meat, dried fish, dried meat, subsistence, we called it trading down, and now we have to get on our hands and knees for subsistence. But we did it long before the people funded from underneath the clouds or the people with hairy face came. But we believed that you did not harm an animal because the animal had a spirit. If an animal was injured, you saved it, that it would bless you. The trees had good luck. You cut trees only from where? You used for firewood, certain sector for build, building canoes, certain section of trees for building timber for houses. Conservation, we called it. You took only what you needed. But we believed in spirit. If you killed a brown bear, you always buried his skull toward the mountain so that his spirit will turn Toward, to return to the mountain, and he will tell his other fellow how you treated him. At the time we were living on Kantak Island, the big canoes used to come up there from the Nanganan, Tekina, Tsuchran, and our own tribe during the sea otter. For the first three days, they used to have a big contest, a big party, and you used to have your trading partner. But this one particular time, 
They challenge us to a dance contest. They put their flag up on one side, and we put our flag up in a big community house on Cantac. And they danced first. We danced second from the Actad area. We did three dances. The first one was an imitation of individual animals, the brown bear, the porpoise, the crab, birds of different types. We have never done that dance before here. But tonight, we're going to bring you the second dance that was used in that contest. It has never been done before since the mid-1800s. It's called the Northern Light People Dance. When we finished our third dance, the people went up there, and they started taking their flag down. They had admitted defeat. In turn, they left a dance instructor and a song instructor in Yakutat. And the rest of the party went back down. None none. So we own the seven songs. We have never had the chance to do them down here in the celebration. But one of these days, we'll bring them down here. The next year, they were coming back up in full force. Through the grapevine, they told in Yakutat, they're coming back. Everybody started getting ready. Those big canoes pulled into Latuya Bay. As they were coming out of Latuya Bay, every one of the big canoes turned over. Everyone in that party drowned. So we still have the songs because we won them. But tonight, we would like to show you the Northern Light people dance. The Northern Lights are spirit of people who have committed suicide, as a legend among the Clinket. They are condemned to wander between heaven and earth. They cannot come back down, and they cannot go back up to heaven where you are born again to replace somebody who died on earth, and your name is passed on. Also, we know that if the northern light turns red over a village, that means there is going to be bloodshed. Blood is going to be spilled in that village. They had been wandering around up there so long, one day they invited the Clinkets, and they danced for them. And this dance we would like to do for you tonight, the first time it has been done in public since the 1800s.
Is uh, my friend Jerry Mackey in the house? These fellows up here uh, want you to walk through the mountain with us. Are you here, Jerry?
I think uh, somebody says up here, uh, he must have gotten scared. Oh, there he is. <laughs> okay, we're going to walk through. This is a walking song. Uh, you'll have to excuse us. We have to wait for our uh, members to come back from the spirit world here. Okay, for our next number, we would like to do a love song, and it's called Walking Through the Mountain. It was composed by a gentleman who fell in love with a girl, and he said it was so strong, his love was so strong, that he said he would walk through the mountain. And if you have been in Yakutat, you found out that we are surrounded completely by mountains. So this is the song he composed. These people that jog today learned it from us. <laughs> I would like to say one thing about this. You know, I've learned to dance a number of years ago. And when it comes to this song, it's a love song. But in the olden days, a young boy had to jump in a river in the morning. Two for seniors. Or oh, they'd have to go down the beach and jump in the water. But the girls, from the time she reached womanhood, was put behind a screen or put in a separate room. And she used to use a hood. She couldn't look up. So it was always a game to the young men sitting around the fire in a big community house. They'd say, hey, look at the fire, look at the fire, just to make her look up, see what she can look up, or what she looks like. So I tried to figure out the ending of this song. 
I imagine this gentleman going down to his girlfriend, you know, and then he turns around and he goes, hello. I don't know if he was intrigued by her beauty or something, or maybe it was the opposite. I have no idea yet to this day. The Tepe D had a song they used in Potlatch. It's a welcome song and also a goodbye song. So we would like to use it as a goodbye song here. Yayina. trying to make a clink it out of this hide that I brought up here. 